All right, the last few days we've been uh, looking at how to find solutions to equations, particularly using graphs, and this idea of the ratio of change. We've been trying to get more and more efficient at that. So today we're going to hit like maximum efficiency on finding solutions in graphing equations. Um, we're going to do that. Uh, we'll talk about it with the equation y is equal to uh, Anthony Posada has to go to the main Anthony office, so that's an important thing for us to note. Uh, but we'll talk about this with the equation y is equal to uh, 2 over 5 x plus 1. Right? So we know that we can find one solution really, really easily. Right? That solution is the one where the x value is 0. When x is 0 here, y would just be 1 because this would all just be 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So we have that solution. We can see that solution on our graph would be right there. Right? Uh, it's, a, it's a solution that's going to be on the y-axis. In fact, it's a special solution for us. We call that solution the y intercept. Y intercept. It's the solution that's going to be on our y-axis. It's also the solution. Arian Estrada Arian to needs to go to the main Arian office now. That's a very important thing for you to know. The y intercept, along with being the, the solution that's on the y axis, it's also, notice it's the, the solution where the input is zero, where the x value is zero. Now, what we talked about the last few days is we could find more solutions to this by using the idea of our ratio of change, where we have that the uh, change in x, which I'm just going to uh, write as the x change, actually, I'm sorry, the y change, y change is the top of our ratio of change, and the x change is the bottom of our ratio of change. And we've been able to use that to say, okay, well, that means if I increase my x by 5, I increase my y by 2. Um, I want to talk about how we can see that same idea on our graph. Our x location is our, horizon Ooh. our, our horizontal Aaliyah location. Jordan, More people getting called the Richard office. Richard Drew Great Gray timing. To the main Yay. Jordan and Richard so Drew we'll wait for that to, to stop. Office. All right, now we're back to here. Um, so our x location, our x coordinate is our side to side location. If we're going to increase our x by 5, visually on the graph in terms of the location of our, of our uh, pen, I guess, that would mean that our side to side location is increasing by 5. And if we're going to increase our y location by 2, that would mean that our up and down location is increasing by 2. So if we increase our x by 5 and our y by 2, we would end up here. That's the point 5, 3. Notice that's the, that's the same thing we would get if we added 5 and we added 2. The point 5, 3. Um, so I want us to be able to really clearly see this ratio of change on this graph. The side to side change that we had was that x change. It was how much x changed. Our up and down change is our y change. And it turns out that that same change could work again, right? Increase your x by 5, increase your y by 2. Notice the point that you would get from that, uh, whether you do it by adding or just by moving your pen or pencil on the graph. Here we'd have 10, 5 is going to be the same. Okay? So we can just move our pen along doing that rate of change to find more solutions. We can also move it in the other direction. But notice that if I move it in the other direction, I have to change my x by negative 5 and my y by negative 2. Well, that makes sense to us because we know that this ratio is also equal to negative 2 over negative 5. If I do that, negative 2 over negative 5, negative 2 over negative 5, negative 2 over negative 5, I'll bet these points are the same points that we would get if we started at... Uh, back at that, that y-intercept, 0, 1, and instead of going plus by 5 and plus by 2, we went minus by 5 and minus by 2. Right? If we did that, we'd have negative 5 and negative 1. If we did it again, we'd have negative 10 and negative 3. Negative 5, negative 1, negative 10, negative 3. So we can simply count the change in y and the, ch I'm sorry, the change in x and the change in y on our graph over and over to very quickly find solutions. So the process here is find the easy solution, which we also call the y-intercept. Sierra Stein, please report to the main office. Sierra Stein. That all these celebrities we're making today. Um, so you find that easy solution, 
and then you can use the ratio of change, just visually what it does in terms of shifting our x and shifting our y, to find that that's, to find other solutions which we can use to make our graph. The reason why this becomes so useful is this. If I ask you for uh, a whole bunch of solutions to y is equal to negative 3 over 2 x plus 4, you could plug in 0 and then plug in 2 and then plug in 4 and then plug in 6. Or you can find that one easy solution. There, now you found me an easy solution, which you know is the y-intercept. It's on our, our y-axis right there. And then recognizing that our rate of change, which you'll also sometimes hear me call the slope, is either negative 3 over positive 2, or we can think about it as positive 3 over negative 2. Right? Remember, this is the change in y over the change in x. I can come to, come to here and say, okay, well, positive 2, negative 3, there's another solution. Positive 2, negative 3, there's another solution. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, there's another solution. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, there's a solu another solution. Or I could use this version that's positive 3 over negative 2. So positive by 3, 1, 2, 3, negative by 2. Positive by 3, negative Madam by 2. Sam Sullivan wow. to the main office. People just love going Madam to the main Sam office today. Sam Sullivan to um, the main office. So what we can recognize is all of these points that we, that we just found are all solutions to this equation. So if I wanted a bunch of, bunch of solutions, I could say, okay, well then um, negative 2, positive 7 is a solution. I could say negative 4, positive 10 is a solution. And I can find all of these solutions without having to do any real arithmetic. All I had to do here was count. Uh, this point would be 1, Attention or sorry, 2, students. 1, another Lindsay solution. Lindsay Cuevas, report to the main Seriously. office. Seriously. Lindsay Cuevas, to the main office. Positive 4, negative 2 is another solution. And if you don't believe me, you can try it. Plug 4 in. All right? But what this idea of visualizing this change ratio, visualizing the amount that x changes by and the amount that y changes by, what it does for us is it lets us do all of that arithmetic with pictures, right? The picture does the uh, multiplying, dividing, the changing of things, and all we have to do then is count them back out and say what all the answers are. It makes us look very, very 